So hello, welcome back to Go Again Gaming in the league that means absolutely nothing here on the channel. And I'm joined again by uh, Tom from Void Games, I'm going to say this time. Big Boss Book Club as well. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, great, great. But I'm happy to be back with bringing weaponized sarcasm um, to this uh, to this league that means absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, so uh, we're back to it all over again with round three matches. Uh, you would have saw uh, me and Tom do the matchup uh, of Azalea versus uh, Olympia earlier this week or yesterday when we're timestamping this video. Yesterday you would have seen it. Um, but um, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Yeah, so, sorry, heartbreaking. Smithy. You're the loveliest person in the world, but uh, unfortunately Olympia uh, didn't serve you well in that game. I'm afraid. Mm. But. Hey ho, uh, you're a good sport nonetheless, and uh, we're going to move on to today's game, which is Kasai versus Viserai, Dear Mamada, content creator extraordinaire, caster, all that good stuff, against uh, against uh, against Hank from Goblin Reserve, who's playing Viserai. And you you've had some uh, you've had some some experience or uh, some sort of knowledge on Viserai, haven't you, to a certain degree? Yeah, to a certain degree. Uh, Viserai and I have a love hate relationship. <laughs> Viserai. Probably my um, second now. Used to be my first favorite hero. Probably my second favorite hero now. Um, but anytime I try and play him, I just job out like a total loser. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I love sitting there and building the decks, and playing the decks. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then I just fail miserably. Mm -hmm. So yeah, love hate relationship with this ride. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Hank's awesome. Hank is. I'm. I. I hope. Hope Hank loses this one because he's got a, a Marvel Viscera, and I'm really jealous. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got Art Knight Shard and everything in his list as well. So. Uh... And, and I did notice. When I was watching the uh, the last game. Um, oh my lord! I can't remember who his opponent was. Holy cow! Holy cow! Uh, I'm really sorry. Uh, Riddler man. Yes, that's yeah. the one. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I, I saw that Marvel Viscera on the table. Like, yeah, swine. Did you watch? Did you watch that game as well? Then did you? On the yeah, 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 yeah. I, I see. So yeah, I'm. Hank's awesome. Hank's another person. I said this about Smithle in the last video. Yeah. Um, Smithle's awesome. Hank's great. Uh, me and Hank have also spoken as part of the uh, the Big Boss Book Club podcast, available on all good podcast platforms. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, guys, absolutely fantastic to speak to. He's an absolutely cracking, cracking fella. We've played as well in the Smithle's Commoner League. So, oh. um, yeah, we, we had a couple of good games on there, which was really fun. Um, yeah, Hank's great. Yeah. Uh, don't know too much about Dion Marmada outside of like the casting. Um, he was on the hit list of people I wanted to invite on the show, yeah. um, but with the show kind of winding down, whether that'll ever happen or not, I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see this game. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Dion Marmada was uh, was my was my round two opponent, I believe, and he was he was on Kasai um, and I was on uh, I was on Azalea, and I lost that one. Unfortunately, it was quite close it's, though. It's Kasai. It's Kasai, isn't it? I mean. I whoever at LSS like they, they, we finally got rid of Centauri Sellsword and then someone else said, you know what we should we should bring her back out it's like why no <laughs> yeah. terrible idea horrible idea why why do that <laughs> yeah blood blood on our hands now available in CC in CC metas now brilliant fantastic yeah yeah thanks guys thanks yeah <laughs> yeah just what we needed just what we needed I was thinking, thinking about this the other day um, Paul um, uh, in the shop of playing Kasai they pick, picked her up and and I, I said like, why why would you do this why would you do this to I'm like oh she's she's really good I was like no just just no just just no um, <laughs> but, I'm gonna get uh, my sil my gold wearing man on a horse to come and kick you in the <laughs> yeah nope. horse with no name oh dog I've got a, I've got a I've got a raging raging dog so I'll just cut that bit no. out um no. But yeah, so uh, we're going to get straight down to the table now and watch uh, Dear Marder take on uh, Hank's Viserai. Dear Marder's Kasai versus Hank's Viserai. And uh, yeah, let's cut to that now. Are you moving? Yes. Cool, so here we go. Uh, we are on the table. As we can see now, uh, Dear Mamada is drawing some cards, and I believe Hanks drew some cards as well. Um, but yeah, as we can see, Big Vis versus Kasai. Um, with Kasai, Kasai sporting just the one 
piece of arcane barrier, which is all she needs to stop rune chance, I believe. Yeah, we don't have to worry about that pesky Rosetta Thorn anymore. No. Everyone can chill out now, drop the arcane barrier down a bit. <laughs> That's right. Um, and Hank is on the on the Scepter of Pain, uh, which is the one that's pay to deal a arcane damage. If arcane damage is dealt, you get a rune charm. Um, that's correct. And if you watch the, if you watch, if whoever's watching this now, if you've seen the other game with Hank playing in, you'll know that this is like a I go search for Arknight Ascendancy and throw it at you game plan. <laughs> Builds up loads of yeah. rune chants and throw that massive card out at you multiple times a game. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I, I from watching that video, I was like, I'd never like. Our night sentence for me has always kind of been like one of them cards that I thought, mm, nah, sorry, party, just don't, not this time. You know like that bit in Iron Man One where he looks at the suit, um, <laughs> uh, and he says, "Next time, baby, next time." Uh, that's kind of me whenever I look at. It. But actually, seeing Hank playing the scepter and playing playing this has actually mm -hmm. made me think. Actually, I quite like the idea. Just build a few rune chants, not too many. Just a few, just enough to get it for free. Throw it along with the rune chance, and just yeah. Actually, I actually really like the game plan. Yeah, it's really really cool. And you know the way Hank plays it is quite sort of mid rangey. He likes to block. He likes to build up his rune chance and then throw a big mm. thing. Um, so he likes to soak up the damage, uh, almost like Sebastian Shaw out of X Men. You know, he's taking in all the hits and then suddenly unleashing a huge yes. burst of energy. That's a good reference, right? <laughs> that is actually a really good reference. I actually really like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kevin actually, Bacon. Kevin Bacon, yeah, what, what a guy. Mm. Um, but um, as you can see here, he's playing uh, a, a Sonata Galaxia, and normally Hank goes and searches for the Runeblood incantation from this particular search, um, which I believe, yeah, uh, you go and get something with... A, yeah, go and get an aura, which is what Runeblood yeah. incantation is. Um, so normally he, that's what he goes and gets, at least from the Riddler Man game. That's what he tended to get a lot of the time just because it's that incremental well that sort of rune chant every turn isn't it so yeah it's just a slow build up it's a nice nice just oh it's not that filtering it's it's a oh. blessing of the occult oh, okay this is the other one that you okay. could, could get as well just blows up gives you rune chance can't go wrong yeah exactly so it's either one of those two, but yeah, this is another another one that I was, you know, we saw it in uh, Dynasty and was like, okay, what is this doing for Viserai? Of course, at the yeah. at, at the time when Dynasty was there, um, everyone was playing Viserai aggro, you know, swarming Gloomvale, Rosetta Thorn, lots of things happening all the yeah. time. Whereas this deck that Hanks crafted is, you know, a lot different, um, and he's coming in with yeah. this Scepter of Pain now for two, and also just shoring it up with that nice little block with the shield. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bloody load. yeah, like everyone looking again. It's like, yeah, he's got a shield. Why not? If he's taking a bit of a, a kick in, it's one block. Hey, fantastic! Can't beat it. Scepter of pain isn't, you know. It, it, yeah, it, it's just sitting there. It's just chilling out. Yeah, but it looks like uh, looks like Diablo Marda is pitching to the scepter to prevent that uh, that damage uh, on turn one here and stopping the rune chant yeah. generation. Um, and that's that's Hank's turn. Just a bit of setup. Um, not choosing to Arsenal card though, which is interesting. Why would that be? Sometimes I've, I have this conversation with people. Sometimes I always say, like, um, good old Andrew from uh, the Gogan Game Discord. Mm. He's always very thingy when we, me and him, have been speaking about like Bravo and, and Guardian. So it's like if if you can't play the card in your Arsenal, or that card in your Arsenal. It's not going to have any utility on your turn. Don't bother arseling. Mm. <laughs> True. And I think that's possibly what he's done here. He's looked at his hand and thought, eh, there's nothing there that's Arsenal useful. So so why bother? Yeah. But we are seeing an early activation of the uh, cash-in, which is obviously taking taking effect from the Crown of Dominion's gold here and allowing Steven to draw two cards and then turning on his uh, swords for the turn, which are going to cost nothing to now swing with Kasai's ability. Yeah. Um, and uh, this it is... It just feels even easier. It just feels easier for Kasai to get her ability. It just... <laughs> yeah. Cause is, it, is it draw swords? I'm sure I was looking at it earlier. It's like your next weapon gets X attack, draw a card. Oh, thanks. Thanks. That's right. Now, Kasai gets all the swords for free for the turn. Cheers, yeah. guys. Thanks for that. 
it's one of the engines in uh, limited Kasaya's draw swords. Um, mm. But um, yeah, it's coming in, coming in with a hot streak. And uh, as I've mentioned on the screen here, uh, Stephen has pitched for this hot streak, but he didn't actually need to do that because obviously, <laughs> uh, because obviously Kasai's turned it on. But he does notice it. Uh, he does notice it soon where he doesn't need to pitch. Um, so uh, so yeah. Um, obviously, Hank uh, blocking with the balance of justice this turn. So I imagine he's just gonna cash it in to draw the cards. Uh, off its effect because obviously Stephen has drawn two or more cards this turn so he's going to be able to draw a card from that as well uh, the balance of justice well, as we can see here Stephen obviously has hit Hank for one damage so he's going to actually going to pay into the, uh, the the grains of blood spill to get that vigor token and this is one of those cards that over the course of this league has actually done a lot of work the grains of blood spill giving that that vigor to warriors is yeah. uh you know you can, you can get a lot back from that um and obviously he's given this this hot streak go again with the blade runner so now he's gonna play an iron song determination so he's gonna give target weapon plus one dominate instead of turn so that's pretty nice What's the other? We've got some sorry, uh, Saber there as well. Haven't what other what loadouts he got? Norin boots, and then Brave Forge braces. That's not. Hmm. Hank. What's Hank got on his feet? Is it the. Spellbound Creepers? The Creepers. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like he's activating Brave Forge braces as well, uh, because obviously, attack hit, he can actually activate this and give it another further plus one. So I think this this Sintari Saber is coming in for one from the Iron Song Determination, two from the Blade Runner, and then an extra three from the Slice and Dice. So I think it's quite a large sword. Yeah, nine damage coming in here on this Sintari. And it, it does have Dominate pumps as well. as well. And if he does block with an attack, it pumps up even more. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so I hate warriors. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty nasty, um, and Stephen just trying to squeeze the value out of his uh, out of his um, out of his Brave Forge braces as well. And obviously, he's not going to be able to arsenal card here. But obviously, arsenaling a raise the army is not a good idea either early on because you can't actually no. use it very well. So that could just be a dead card in his arsenal for a long time. So the fact that he's just pitching into this, and if this hits, he's going to be able to actually activate the Grains of Blood Spill again to be able to create a second Vigor if he's got if it does hit. So that's going to be interesting to see yeah. whether that happens. It looks like it is going to happen, yeah. and that's exactly what he's doing now. So he, on his next turn, he's going to have two Vigors that pop. Um, Not a bad way to start your turn. Two free resources. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty, pretty well played there. He actually uses resources really well. Uh, and you know, decided not to clog his arsenal with a raise the army because you don't really want to have that in there. Um, so yeah, blessing of the occult is going to blow up and give him three rune chance. So he's up to four now. His Hank. Bad. Again, life is a resource. He can take. Yeah. He can store in damage, like it says. Exactly. Building up some damage. Oh, here we go. He's going to go search for whatever he wants. He's going to go get a non-attack action, discarding the Amplify the Art Knight, so he can go get whatever non-attack he wants. Any guesses as to what that's going to be? What do you reckon? I, I would probably have said, like, the incantation, but I mean, it could be even bring up another... I mean, read the runes is always a nice one, but... And that's exactly what he's got. Read the runes. There we Wee. go. So he's just going to build up his rune chance then for now. Yeah. And that's the thing as well, is right, is if you look at Hank's life, you don't take into account the fact that he's going to be generating seven rune chance. So essentially, that's seven life off of your opponent, if you think about it that yeah. way. Um, so like the Sebastian Saw uh, reference, he is taking damage, but he's storing it to deal it back. Um, we can keep going to the well on that one as well, which is really nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just, just that's the gift that's going to keep on giving. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And there's the read runes. So he's going to get a viscerai trigger first of all, and yeah. then the plus one, plus the, then the three. Yes, yeah, so he's going to go up to eight, I believe, from this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So that's I like it. Yeah. So now, if you think, you know, thirty-four plus eight. 
you know, Hank is basically on more life than Diego Madre, if you think about it that way. Um, but let's not get too complex into that. But, uh, yeah, eight green chance on field already. Yeah. It's pretty good. Four cards in hand, one in Arsenal from Hank as well. It's It's been a good trade-off. So he's, like you say, he's taken... But he's built up more to exactly. fire back. So it's a good trade. Yeah. I need to get his list off him. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty good. Pretty good stuff. I, I, I like seeing yeah. Viser, I like seeing Viserai played this way. Um, I think I think I'm just I think my problem is I've been too attached to the like you said what you were saying earlier about the aggro version where it's just fire and attack maybe a couple of room chance fire and attack a couple of chance and then Rosetta but obviously you can't do the Rosetta exactly what we getting so uh, Stevens played an Outland skirmish and then he's activated Kasai. Um, so uh, he is al- his sword attacks now or the first one that the first one that uh, the first one that hits he gets a gold from. Um, so this hot streak is coming in for five because of the Outland skirmish, and um, if Hank blocks with a uh, attack action, yeah, if he blocks with an attack, it gets go again. But there's probably a way mm. for Steven to give it go again in his hand there. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, the great thing about this is that obviously the Vigor has paid for the Hot Streaks attack. Um, because obviously the Vigor's popped at the start of his turn, so he's still got one floating as well over there, which he can use, which is just absolutely great. Yeah, it's just a great way to stay turn, isn't it? Oh, here's me with my free resources. <laughs> Let's just see what see what wonderful magic this brings. Just gives Warrior more stuff to do with their sort of inherent higher blue count as well that they haven't been able to do before yeah. until now and lo and behold there's the go again enabler with the glint he's not going to be drawing a card because nice. Hank's not, not blocked yeah yeah but even then the go again is still worth playing it is yeah and obviously we've got the copper and the gold here so the outland skirmish trigger happens so they get the copper and obviously the gold off of Kassai's ability so making money on this swing and he's obviously pitching into the grains of blood spill with the one floating to get another vigor to a vigor for his next turn uh, so really really capitalizing on that piece of armor which is which is great to see and then coming with a centauri saber for just two i believe yeah, it's just a nice finisher because even if he blocks with the attack, obviously it pumps as well. And if there is anything sneak, there's always there's always that risk as well because he's st- he has still got a card in hand there, hasn't he? Yeah, two cards in hand, one in Arsenal. He's yeah. blocked for six there yeah. on that. So that is indeed fully blocked. Mm. Stephen asking a card and drawing four. Is that- um, is that a come to fight there? It I was. Think. It was, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the... uh. So we've got the Rune Blood Barrier coming out here, which is going to give him four Rune Chant tokens, bringing him up to 12. Mm. 13, sorry. Um. And pitching the Arc Knight Shard to get that extra one and then passing his turn. So he's just going to have 13 rune chants there, which are going to act as a bit of a rune blood barrier, I might say. Um, yeah, because is, is it a... I can't remember if it's a, a force thing. Do you have to blow them up? Yeah, if your hero be dealt damage, yeah. just destroy, destroy that many rune chants and prevent that damage. Yeah, so... Um, it's a bit of a risk. <laughs> It is, yeah. I imagine though he's just going to try and block with his 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 cards in hand plus the Arsenal card here, and then maybe threaten something like a Arc Knight Ascendancy to get try and swing back into it. Yeah, that seems to be what his plan has been over the course of this league so far. And Hank's currently at one one, I believe, in this tournament, and Stephen okay. is at one one as well. Because he won oh, against wow. he won against me and then won, uh, lost against Dromai, so both of these players are one one at the moment. Um, but yeah, the vigor has popped on the start of Stephen's turn. He's just deciding what he wants to do, um, but that's always good. A five card hand plus just one floating resource is basically like having Tunic online, um, 
which is you know good for a lot of decks. Yeah, figure is. I think my favorite token that we're getting from heavy hitters is probably Vigor is definitely a close second, um, especially in Guardian because it's always like you you know for a fact you always lumber jokes, and you're like ah oh, I just need one more resource. Oh what do you know Vigor? Yeah. Resource proper taken care of. So he has chosen to pitch a yellow into the gold here. So he's going to have mm. one floating left after that. So yeah. just fill it ring. Also a little triggers bit. his uh, also triggers his ability. So he gets uh, swords. Does indeed. I hate Kasai. <laughs> <laughs> but he is just front loading this attack here. So that's plus four currently on the first swing. If it hits, you get a, you get a copper because of the outland skirmish, and then. Yeah. This has got to be a way for him to get. Well, I suppose if he throws the hot streak, he'll more. Yeah, yeah, more likely get go again anyway. I'd imagine. Yeah, so damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if ha Hank blocks with an attack, it gets go again. Um, but Stephen probably can give it go again, regardless of whether what whether Hank decides to block it with non attacks or not. Um, mm. But, uh, but the thing is here is that Hank wants to block because obviously his rune blood barrier is up and he doesn't want to lose too many rune chance. That's that's it. Uh, that would be a massive uh, a deduction on that rune chance. Yeah, I mean it's... that's I, that's why I'm not too struck on the the on the barrier. And it's because of that ability. The fact it's it's great that you essentially end up with a little shield, but yeah, you, you kind of want to be attacking with them as opposed to using them as a a block yeah it's just it's a strange one and i think i remember when i edited this video because obviously i listened to what the players are saying i think hank is saying that you know it's only in there for the rune chant generation he doesn't really want to be sacrificing rune chance to the prevent damage no. effect uh, and that's exactly what he's doing here is he's blocking with his oval and then two other cards from hand which is another rune blood barrier as well yeah. um but Stephen coming Ooh. in with a strike. <laughs> Oh wow, that's definitely not what he wanted to see. Yeah, this is a sick card as well. Stroke of foresight. I re I really want. Yes. To, I, re I really do really really like warriors. I think I'm gonna try and build a Dory deck, like an old school Dory deck at some point. Nice. Do um, quick silver prodigy. Do that. Do that one. You could do yeah yeah. Something different. You never see her game played. No, you don't. I suppose she's not in C. Not in CC at least. Blitz. No, but yeah, blitz. No. Well, Ziggy, Ziggy won the um, the Go Again Gaming Open th two or three on Quicksilver Apology. Um, oh, nice! But, but yeah, nine damage coming in here, and Pank's blocking for six, so he's gonna, he, he's going to be taking three, I believe. Um, well, he'd be losing some rune chance, which is definitely. Not... Um... Oh no, no, he's not. He's reducing to rune chance. Oh, <laughs> gaining rune chance out of it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I then. like it. I see. I, now that is a card I do like, and I would always pack that over like a sink blow or something like that. Because I hundred percent, yeah. It's, nine times out of ten, it's always going to be free, and it, it gains you an extra room champ. Yeah. Oh, he's blade flurried as well. Okay, so this is going on to eleven damage. Oh. Is there a reaction <laughs> after this as well? <laughs> just keeps adding dice. Just let's just keep adding dice. Yeah. He needs to pull out another rune. Oh, no, he's taking... Losing some rune chance. Yeah, so he's lost two rune chance in that transaction, which is only basically one because of the because of the reduced rune chance made one. So he's only lost one rune chance from that whole attack, really, which mm -hmm. is good, especially if he's got a crack back, which is going to cost him nothing. Uh, but we've got the Centauri Saber now coming in for four as well because of the Blade Flurry behind it. Um, so that's still uh, quite a lot. Pesky Saber. Pesky Saber coming in for four. You think it's a two, but uh, yeah, but you like normally you think to yourself, oh, it's just a two, but the block with it and it pumps itself, and oh yeah. And if 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 the players are watching this back, Stephen, if you're watching this back, uh, Hank, etc., the fact that you are putting dice on the attacks, like you know, like coverage you would normally require you to do, makes it a lot easier for casters to actually know what's going on. Um, so yeah, fair play to all the people that decide to do that while on stream. And I think it's a good practice to 
uh, I think it's good practice to do that because if you do have a play on stream, I think they do require you to do these things now. So yeah, sure. His experience is uh, as dealing with all these big events. That's what it is. Exactly. Yeah. I see. He sees people doing it all the time. Yeah, and just knows just knows how useful it is. Another thing that's funny about this game as well is that obviously uh, Hank and Dear Mamada are both sporting Dear Mamada mats, which I think is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, well, I'm, I'm really surprised he's not um, rocking a, a Goblin Reserve mat. Might as well, like you said on the, the last video, you might as well plug, plug your own merch while you're here, aren't you? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Smith was on that uh, green tree <laughs> game, game stuff. Yeah, this is just what Go Again that Go Again Gaming is all about. Free advertising, baby. <laughs> yeah. I'd be there on my Void Games play mat, my Big Boss Book Club sleeves, my Bravo Bro sleeves. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I've got one random Go Again Gaming sleeve as well. <laughs> yeah, just one singular <laughs> sleeve. You card. I can't remember. You sent me something in it. I can't remember. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, both those mats are very nice. They are. Credit. Yeah. The Scarlet character is very much Dear Mamada's, like, you know, mascot for his channel. Um, so, uh, mm. yeah, appearing on both the mats there. But I believe it's over to, uh, I believe it's over to Hank's turn now. He took... Yeah. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Back no, it's, those, he took it and then just passed, I believe. Um, yeah. Played those, those are a chance of looking mighty low. <laughs> Got blessings to the occult out, didn't he? So, um, Stephen is very much on the um, on the offensive, and uh, as you can see on the on the screen there, it says Stephen pitches this um, pitches for this in a second. It's very early morning match here, so both of these players playing early in the morning for the league that means nothing. And uh, yeah, he realizes that he needs to pitch for this hot streak, uh, <laughs> whereas on the one of the previous turns he didn't need to pitch for it. So couple of little things here and there but um you know it's early in the morning so all is forgiven blame, yeah blame the time of day exactly and the fact that the league means absolutely nothing it doesn't matter you know if you make <laughs> a few errors here and there which you immediately not, rectify no judge popping in giving it like an infraction or anything. Absolutely not. no 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 it's fine one thing you'll always find um what you always like about dear mamada when you're like listening to him on commentary, he's so oh, what's the best word? Knowledgeable is probably the best word. Yeah, very much um, so. Like he could look at this board right now and just tell you every single card that's what it does, probably even how much it costs uh, to buy. Um, very smart man. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to be if you're in, you know, you'll do it. You, I guess you, you, you get that knowledge as you do so many different events. And um, so Hank's blocked with four. So he's blocking for four. Uh, he's going with the quick silver, though. He's getting he's the quick get silver. going to get the go again anyway. Mordred tied underneath, I think. It is, yeah. Oof. Not a card you want to get rid of. Not really, no. It's only a two block as well. So it just feels even more, even worse, doesn't it, having to use it. Mm. Um Yeah, so here's the realization. Of... <laughs> Let me just pitch. It's fine. There we go. Sorry. We, we did that earlier. That's fine. As edit it. Oh, no, it's too late. <laughs> but there we go. Um, but he's not going to gain the life from that because he's still at 40 life, Stephen, at the moment. So. And. Um... Gasai's just so aggressive. And it's so. Because it's Warrior, it's, it's this. Are they going to be throwing reactions? What reactions? How much do I really need to deal with? Centauri Saber pumps itself. What do I need to do to block? The game plan here of just building rune chance and firing doesn't seem to be quite going Hank's way. Oh, wow. Not a rattle bones. <laughs> oh, no. So... <laughs> In the swing, nice. I thought Mordred tie block for two, but actually blocks for three. So that original block was three. obviously covered up, and obviously this second one is covered up as well. Um, but it doesn't look like. Uh, was Rattlebones block for two? Was that three as well? I think Rattlebones might be a three as well. So he's blocked. That. Don't quote me. He hasn't taken any damage, so he's blocked everything there. Uh, missed a few yeah. things there, but hey, but hey ho. Um, 
but yeah, I think that's the whole hand from Hank blocked out the attack there from, from Steven. And now it's just going to be over to Hank. He's going to pop the blessing and then get up to 12 rune chance. Yeah. Um, I think so. Yeah, it's nine. So if he does have something like Arc Light Ascendancy or something like Amplify the Art Knight, he can play something for free um, yeah. because of the sheer amount of rune chance that he has. Um, but we'll see what happens here. Um, it's a shame that Rattlebones went. No, it's just going to be drawing up. So he's just being patient and just... Because that last game against Riddleman, he... Because he was just like, oh yeah, I'll just rattle. Oh, sorry, I lost you for a moment there. The last game against Riddleman. Oh, um, he kept using Rattlebones to sort of banish the Art Knight Ascendancy. And then That's right. So it's like, just, yeah, just keep bringing it back. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Um, so, yes, yeah, so using it as a block is definitely. Yeah. I hate that Marvel. <laughs> it's a nice one. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, Stephen is definitely the aggressor here, pitching a nourishing emptiness to come in with a hot streak for two to begin the turn. And again, threatening the the fact that it will have go again if he blocks with an attack action. Now, I don't know how many attack actions Hank has. Sometimes he maybe, depending on his hand composition, he might want to get rid of uh, an Arclight Ascendancy to be able to use, get it back with stuff like Rattlebones. But, um, but yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it's, it's not a problem. If you know you've got bones there, my... Um, it's it's if he's low on attacks and he's using rattle bones for block, he probably needs to be keeping hold of that ascendancy. Yeah, very much so. Um, but he's going to be taking some damage. He's taken the original two from Hot Streak, and now obviously the Blade Runner is pumping up the Centauri by three. So now this is five coming at him now um, with the Centauri saber. And I really like how he. Um, Demo Marder's like stacking his pitch here so he can keep a track of what he's putting in and what cards he's putting in as well. Mm -hmm. Pitching a lot of reds that nice. turn to, uh, to fuel the turn. Um, but Hank using an unmovable to block that rest out and he's still left with a two card hand, one in Arsenal with 12 rune chance available. So maybe this could be the turn where he gets back into the game somehow and throws yeah. some sort of salvo maybe he's got the um, become the Art Knight in Arsenal perhaps that could be that would be a good move yeah again something that searches for you know if you've got a non-attack to discard you can go get the Art Knight Ascendancy and play it because you can play it for free because you've got that many rune chants out yeah and so. it's got Dominate built in which is quite nice plus oh, the on hit which course. is also nice yeah it does have Dominate built in but he had got the Brave Forge there so he's still got a good armor block. Yeah, I was going to say, it's interesting that uh, Stevens chose to use the Crown of Dominion in this matchup. It's just more of like a racy card, I guess, to access your cash-ins, and that's obviously how yeah. he's got this life lead. Um, and Hank choosing to not attack with the Ninth Blade, instead just pitching it into Scepter of Pain to potentially deal one arcane damage to Steven. That's exactly what he's done, and therefore just getting a rune chant out of it. But he could have swung that birthday cake, but he chose not to. So very patient on Hank's behalf. But Amada is at 40 health still, so swinging it at this point probably wouldn't mean much. True. You probably want to be swinging ninth and your opponent's on a little bit less health. Um, Makes sense, yeah. So Spores of War to start, so obviously this gives the next attack go again. So this is going to be coming in for four go again. On hit, create two coppers. Mm. Oof. Nice. Now, coppers don't really mean too much in season. Unless he's got blood on your hands in deck. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, blood, yeah. It's, it's it definitely means something, but not as much as blitz. You know, it's, you know, blitz you can get you can get it a lot quicker in blitz. Um, oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But um, yeah, we'll see what I, I don't feel like he's going for the long game. 
I feel like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's definitely going for the, like you said earlier, about the Crown Dominion being a, a bit of a chase, a bit of a speed play. Yeah, I don't think he's he's thinking, what, what are we doing on the second cycle? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is quite a funny one. When Kasai was originally released, obviously he was like, oh, she cares about gold, but what about copper and blood on her hands and all of those mechanics? You know, they're not as not as prevalent in the in these decks, but obviously they still can do some stuff. But um yeah, Steven yeah. is is gonna be is gonna be hitting for four here and creating two coppers, putting him up to three coppers. So that could come into <laughs> could come into effect, even if you just want the card draw. You know, you've got a couple of blues in hand, you pitch them, maybe gain some reds out of it. There is that utilization mm. as well, of course. Yeah. I mean, hell, even if you only just trigger drone ones, a size sword. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Um... <laughs> Down to 23 to 39. That's not. Mm. We've not even seen really. No, we haven't seen much from Hank yet. Um, but yeah, using the uh, the floating mm. resources to create vigor from the Grain Blood Spill, and now coming in with the Hot Streak uh, for two at the moment, pitching the strokes. So it's coming in for two. You've got one in Arsenal, two in hand. It's, oh, one no, in no. hand. Yeah, one in hand. Well, this just, could be anything, couldn't it? He's just going to be taking that as well. So that puts Stephen up to five copper, and he's also pitching into the grains again. So he's going to have two vigors on his next turn. So that's and again, that's going to be a five card hand plus two resources on his next turn. That's pretty scary. But Hank choosing to take all the damage here suggests to me that he's got something else in it up his sleeve this turn. Something ready and raring to go. I think so. Maybe he's got the ascendancy in hand. Maybe he's got the, like I said, become the Art Knight so he can go get the Ascendancy, maybe. So he's coming to fight with the Tunic Resource. Runic Reckoning. Nice. I like that. I I really like Runic Re Reckoning. I have it in um, Vincent. So it's come to fight free? No. Uh, um, well, it is if you um, have a Rune Champ, which he does. Oh, I see. Uh, wow. Okay, so yeah, Come to Fight was played off of the Tunic resource, then Runic Reckoning is free. Runic, The second Runic Reckoning is free. Here we go. Plus nine attack. <laughs> Come on, please be the Ascendancy. Oh, he, he um, had the ninth blade already. Yeah. That's why he pitched it, because he didn't need it. Nice. Beautiful move. Pretty good. Oh, this is what we're talking about. This is this is what we're talking about. So it's eight, <laughs> 18, 18 physical damage, and then and then fifteen rune chants. And he's um, created an extra rune chant as well off the uh, the ninth blade for later. Wow. Okay, then that's a lot of damage there, Hank. <laughs> Holy hell! It's been the trade. It's been the trade. It was like everyone like. And he, he lost. He's built up into an attack. Yeah. Again, X Men first class. It. That's rolling in first class. Sebastian so we Shaw. get Kevin Bacon. We're going foot loose in on. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm not going to go IMDb. How many films Kevin Bacon? Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's Hollow Man. It. No wait, that's that's wrong. That's awful. Hollow Man. Wow. Yeah, I forgot he was in that too. Jeez. Awful film. <laughs> it, was, it was poor, yeah. Wow, okay, so Steven's taken all of the rune chants. So he's taken 15 damage from rune chants, and now he's got staring down 18 Ooh. physical damage. Um, yeah, let's, put, let's get the arbor out. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. So it looks like he's blocking four on equipment and three from the Blade Runner, so that's seven so far so still 11 coming in at him after this is the maths if the maths is correct on that which puts him down to 13 if he doesn't block anything else currently 
God, it's a big swing by Hank, isn't it? Wow. That is wonderful. I have um, I have had a game against Pat Shaw on actually funnily enough on your disc. Um, mm-hmm. and he was playing as Oldham, and I I threw a knife blade with all, <laughs> all the all the the, the rune chants at him, and he just went to see. Brilliant. <laughs> it's like hi, have this. Such a good card. Yeah, well, Stephen took 11 there. He, oh, okay, this is a good response. Cashing wow. in. this is... But now Hank needs to take advantage. He can't really sit back anymore. He has to press. It, it, DMO has been doing it all game, and but Hank can't rest on his laurels now. <laughs> he needs to, needs to press hard. Yeah. But he's, oh, he's still got all the cards in the world, has not he? Yeah, so the Vigors, the Vigors, the Vigors popped. He paid for mm. Spoils of War, and then a Blood in the Hand is going off for five coppers. So this is going to be a mixture of Target One-Handed Weapon has plus one while attacking. Target One-Handed Weapon has go again. Target one ha- One-Handed Weapon can attack twice this turn. Um, so he can choose. Uh, Dang. Quite a few of those things. Okay, so it looks like he's choosing for two attacks on each one and then plus one on each one. I think that's what he's signalling here with these dice. Has he drawn? Has he drawn yet? Uh, from oh. from yeah, cash in. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did draw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say because because otherwise the sword attack. Yeah, but now the sword attacks are free. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. So sword attacks cost nothing. So this is going to come in for, I believe this is coming in for three. That's what the red dice signifies is plus one, and he can swing with it twice, which is what the white dice signifies. Um, so yeah, a lot going on here on the blood on the hands, which obviously. Uh... And if he even blocked with it, he would have. Oh, oh, Kasai. Yeah, I, th- I think he may. I think he meant to activate activate Kasai before he attacks. Yeah, that's what he's doing now. Um, so, so yeah, this is coming in for five because of the spoils of war and the plus one. Yeah, so the spoils of war is still there. Um, so it's obviously it's coming in for five, and he's just going to unmovable it. Ah, there we go. Just good because then it doesn't give the Centauri the buff, which is nice. And then the hot streak is coming in for two. Now, the thing is with this is that hot streak does not have, does not have, um, but it does have go again. So he's now blocked with a dread triptych. He's going to blade for oh. me. All right. Okay. So I put it up to four. So he's currently taking one. Which he just did. Yeah, and, your, and then your next weapon attacks buffed as well. Hank probably would have been better off just leaving it because that surely would have just ended his turn. Yeah, it's hard to play around those things, though, isn't it? Um, and now yeah. Centauri Saber is going to come in for. Um, what was he going to attack with? Yeah, he's attacking with Centauri Saber again for Blade Flurry plus the one from Copper from the Blood in the Hands plus the two. Yeah, so five to finish it off and that's pretty pretty nasty and all of it's that it's on par with bolt and combo though isn't it when you when you get the blood on the hand you've got enough it's just on par with um, the luminar ascension combo yeah if you've got enough copper anything it's played a bit better yeah if you've got loads of copper it's uh, pretty good But yeah, still just a raw five damage here. Um, no arsenal for Steven. Just the cash in, just allowing him to really sort of do something on the crack back after that ridiculous turn from Hank. Um, yeah. He's just going to block six. Oh. Uh... Yeah. I think Hank should have just 
just ignored that that first hot streak. I'm not sure whether he, can he even can he even attack again now because the Sintari Saber for the five Sintari Saber didn't have go again, did it? So I'm not sure if he. Could. No, because he hasn't played anything to give it go again. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether he could have attacked with hot streak there, but it looks like Hank's blocked it all anyway. So I'm not sure if that really makes yeah. a diff really makes a difference because he's just going to Arsenal pass anyway by the looks of it. Um, Yeah, it's just gonna, it's just gonna. Well, he can't ask because he's got no cards in hand, so it's just gonna draw up anyway. But I'm not sure whether that Sintari Saber had go again. No, um, cause, yeah, because there was nothing. He didn't have any cards. Yeah, Everything's in pitch. Doesn't none of his equipment gave a go again. No, maybe I'm not sure. So maybe that's a mm. slight error. But again, cashing in again here mm. to uh, Jesus. <laughs> To draw two cards, and I think what he's doing now is he's looking for his graveyard to potentially activate Kasai before he attacks. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's doing. So obviously he's going to generate gold when the first one hits. It's gold. And here we go, starting off with a Centauri. Sorry, a uh, hot streak for two. Pitching of this round's on me. Spicy include. But I say that's that's different. I suppose it lets all players draw a card though, doesn't it? It does. So True. there's no there's no thingy to uh not play it. No incentive to not play it. Yeah. I'll get my words out at some point. It's eleven PM here in the UK, so uh it's okay to make casting errors. But Holy moly, it's actually 11 p.m. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I think, I think we're doing all right. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he's pitched, uh, obviously got some floating pitch here to give that hot streak go again with the Blade Runner, and that obviously will pump up the next weapon by plus one because it is the blue version. Um, but it is hitting Hank, which means he's obviously going to get some uh, some stuff. Um, and uh, he is going to be using his spare pitch to... Fuel the grains to get more vigor, which is nice. Yeah, these aren't hits. Oh, they just keep mounting up between gold and vigor. <laughs> they do indeed. Like, no. Oof! And as you can see there, the uh, the Centauri coming in for three because of the Blade Runner before it, and now the in the swing, nice. which pushes it up to six. And obviously, it's Hank choosing to block with a sink below, which. He's covering up four of it, so still maybe leaking two. Oh, the glint, the quicksilver has been played now, so obviously he's going to be Double, able to yeah, three. Going to be able to draw a card because of that. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't get a pump because it's not an attack action. Yeah. Two. Yeah. I was thinking, then, no, that's wrong, but yeah, no, that's right, perfectly right. Oh. Where did the? Nice. He gets the card as well. Just agromania, uh, DM Armada. Yep, just sword swinging all over the place. Uh, it looks like Hank is still going to be taking two at the moment from this, because obviously he's covered four. Um, yeah. Diomar now has another card to play with. And uh, I think he's already created the gold from the first hit. No, this is the first attack. So he's going to be able to create the gold as well if it hits. Oh, he's on yeah, song as well. Oh, Iron Song response. Okay. Yikes. So. So it's currently going over the top. Oh, another D react. Wow, this is a lot of lot of play in the reaction step. Jeez. Way. So he's blocking eight now. Yeah, so still one getting through, but that extra rune chant is hopefully going to come in handy. Yeah. And the floating resource was used on another grains of blood spill. So Stephen is going into the next turn with a five card hand because of the arsenal and two floating resources next turn. So yeah. that's pretty scary. But what has Hank got here? A Sonata Galaxia. So he's going to go search for an aura. Uh, 
Another blessing of the occult. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to stack them rather quickly rather than drip feed. Just like, just give me a stack of rune chants ASAP. Yep. Exactly. And that's it, just passing. So obviously uh, Stephen's vigors are going to crack, so he's going to get two resources, and I think he is just looking for his graveyard. But here's the issue. Yeah. You could use both them resources, just draw from the gold, and then get all his swords for free. <laughs> yep. If you wanted to. Exactly. Just, yeah. I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but I'm not a big fan of Kasai. Um... <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if I've mentioned it. Or not. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I think. I think you're. All, I think. I think you're okay. She didn't. She didn't really do anything. In, <laughs> she didn't really do anything in Pro Tour um, this weekend. So there was no Kasai in the top eight. I don't think so. But I guess if you're looking at it from a Blitz mm -hmm. perspective, I think the the old Blitz, the old Blitz Kasai was just worse. Uh, I don't think. I'm not sure if, yeah. if this one in Blitz is as oppressive. If you're speaking about it from that perspective, but. Yeah, I mean, because we mainly play Blitz in the shop, but but yeah, I've not really had to deal with her properly yet. And right. the one time I did play against her, pretty much. But on the flip side, I was playing as Bravo, so that's kind of what you get. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so it's still Steven's turn at the moment. Still interested to see where we're going with this. Yeah. So. Yeah. Starting off with an Outland Skirmish, so obviously this next attack gets plus two, and obviously if uh, the next time a weapon, hit, weapon hits, you get a Copper. Nice opener. Just got a you know, blood in hand sitting in the arsenal. <laughs> oh. Alright, so using one uh, of the resources... Hot Streak first. Hot Streak for five. Uh, sorry, for four. Um, if it's defended by an attack, it will have go again. Hank, over to you. <laughs> Three cards in hand, one in Arsenal. For some reason, I just wanted to say, Hank, you will go on my first whistle. Yeah. You will go on my second whistle. Classic. Brought it back, you know. They did, yeah. On BBC Two. Uh, That's not too bad, actually. Watched a few of them, but... Doesn't yeah, we watched we watched the first one. So, yeah. So doesn't have, doesn't the, have the, the ref's uh, not the anymore though, is he? No, doesn't have the magic nah. as the old one, unfortunately. Can't capture that nineties magic again. Lightning in a bottle that was. That's it. You'll never have another wolf. No, exactly. They tried to imitate it, didn't they, with the um oh, what was his name? Oh, there's a, there's another guy in there. It's got a similar sort of look, like you know, trying to be a bad yes. boy, long hair sort of situation. Um, yeah, the sports model. Yeah, that's it. But uh, yeah, so this is being given oh, go again with Blade Runner. Go. go again. And he is just going to take it. Let's see, and then the next weapon. He's taking it to the face. He's activating the grains of blood spill to. Uh, to uh, get some vigor next turn, of course he is, because that's the uh, one of the most valuable things you can do at the moment. Yeah. Ooh, and then CNC. Ooh, CNC. Oh, a fancy CNC. Absolutely. I have to make sure I flash that image up. The fancy uh. CNC coming in for six, threatening that arsenal. No D reacts, which we know Hank has a lot of. Well, not a lot of, but we've seen obviously the the sinks and the. Uh, Reduces. Yeah, I mean a fair few sinks the unmovables as well. Of course, yeah. A good, a good suite of D reacts in there. Um, yes, yeah, so CNC is definitely going to ruin his. Mhm. Mm we'll see. Taking his time, thinking about it. I think there's a few rune blade. <laughs> Do I just? I think there's a few rune blade cards as well that block for two. They're not, they're not really known for effective blocking, really, are they? Yes. Um, no, you're right. Yeah. I mean, some some of the cards, the, generally you find that the like the M's all like block for three, but everything else is generally like a two. Yeah, I could be, I could oh. be making stuff. I up. mean, look at all the D reacts there. <laughs> nice. Cool. But 
but he has thrown quite a few attacks. We've seen a few amplify the out now. Um, a few unmovables are in there. Yep, blocking with a Arclight 7. It's in Looming Doom there. Oh, that better be a rattle bones in, <laughs> in Arsenal. There's got to be. Um, but that's pretty much it. Steven's just going to Arsenal pass, and he's going to have another vigor to pop on his next turn with a five card hand. Um, so, yeah, the blessing's just going to pop and give him three rune chance, which puts him up to five. And then we've got the Rune Blood incantations. This is going to give him some three Rune Chants over the course of three turns. Yeah, that drip feed we read about earlier. And Red then, one as well, so... And then a second Rune Blood incantation. Nice. Um, but uh, as I flashed up on screen there, he did miss a Viscerai trigger for playing another Rune Blood card, a Rune Blade card. Um, so he should be on six rune chance there rather than five. Um, so, uh, so yeah, cause he, obviously, he obviously played two rune blood incantations that turn. So should be on six, but obviously uh, these things are missed. Luckily, the league means absolutely nothing, so it's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. Nothing's on the line here. Oh, just a very stark contrast to this weekend where $50,000 was on the line. Here at the league, there's nothing. Yeah. It's absolutely nothing whatsoever. 50,000 imaginary dollars. That's right. Um, and Bison think, dollars. Hank is just checking how many d reacts he's played this game. <laughs> a lot. Um, sieving through his deck there like an absolute madman, just searching for how many d reacts he has used. Maybe at the request... Of DM Armada, maybe DM Armada wants to know how many D reacts he's used, or maybe it's just for his own knowledge going into this as to what he wants to do. Um, but he's just going to be uh, using the Scepter of Pain now um, to deal one and get a rune chant. So he did get his rune chant in the end, at least. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, there was no incentive there for DM Armada to block that. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, Although saying that, I think I think Hank had one floating, and then he attacked with Scepter, which you know Scepter cost two, so I'm not sure whether that was also an oversight. Um, oh. So maybe that. Did he have a tunic? No, he didn't use a tunic trigger, did he? No, there was one. There they was... could have. There's no dice on it. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I've missed that. But leave a comment section below if you yeah. if you uh, if you did. We're, we're 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 watching this live, so we can't really rewind it and stuff. But there we go. Um, but yeah, over to Steven. He's got a five-card hand and one floating resource because of the, the Vigor. Damn Vigor. Oh, good. going back through again. Going back through again. How many defense reactions have you... Have you used? <laughs> How much more of this can you stop? Yeah. It's quite a lot in the bin, then. It's looking pretty... Pretty... Uh... Thin. It's pretty stacked. Mm. That's the thing, isn't it? Isn't it really? Because um, I's got a lot of sword swings she can access. Um, yeah. So if it goes down to, I that, mean, we know he's got another ninth blade. So if he if he can get, become the art knight in his hand and go get that last ninth blade, because I'm sure it's still in his deck, he he's p potentially got. Got the murder in the bag, with, but he needs to be able to get it. Yeah, <laughs> and not it, die. It's just gonna. It's gonna be interesting to see who can threaten lethal first, and obviously Hank's at thirteen. I'm not sure whether Steven can do it this turn, but I I'm pretty sure Hank can threaten lethal next turn with six rune chance on field. Well, eight because obviously both of those rune bloods are gonna pop. Um, Yep. So I think Hank might be in the position where he can threaten lethal first, which is which is good. Um, but yeah, he's played a Slice and Dice followed by a Warrior's Valor. Now the Warrior's Valor is pretty sick. Um, it's going to pump it by plus three, and if it hits, it gets go again. So this, this hot streak is going to come in for six. Mm. Oh, so that's, a, that's the 
perfect weapon to use on because now regardless pretty much because he hasn't got the equipment block that's probably why he was also asking if D reacts you've <laughs> used yeah yeah because a cheeky reduced to rune chant maybe a single cheeky f unmovable sorts that unless of course um, Ahmad has got some cool awesome reactions in hand which may very well be the case oh looming doom yeah so it's blocking for three so it's currently still leaking three over the top and giving go again but no there's a fateful scene so there it is seven block on the hot streak see so uh, does he have a way of getting it to hit does he have a reaction <laughs> is there a reaction to give it go again and Maybe, a, maybe I mean, a even if it just hits, it gets to go again. So even if oh, true. a buff. Yeah, of course. The Warriors Valor is still behind it, isn't it? So it's still going to hit. Yeah, so... There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So that is, that is one sneak. Next attack gets plus two as well. Yeah. So he's pitching a, a precision press into the Grains of Blood Spill to get two... Uh, two floating plus one vigor for next turn, and obviously this is going to be still leaking one, which I think he's done already. Yep, yeah, and now obviously you're going to be using that one to yeah. activate the Brave Forge bracers, which gives his Centauri <sighs> save plus one plus two, so it's coming in for six on this attack. Jesus, and of course if he blocks with an attack, it'll get pumped again anyway. It's coming in for eight. Oh, because of the because of the slice and dice that you played at the very start, I think. Um, yes, that will do it. If he, oh, it depends on what he's got in his hand. If he, mm. because there's, there's not really good. He's got mm, one floating. Oh, mm. I don't think there's anything that gives it a plus four. I don't think there's anything that gives it a plus four. Not a reaction. Uh, route, I think, does. Well, I think route essentially gives it plus four because it gives it plus three and then bounces a card to your hand. Yeah, bounces the block. Yeah, so that basically simulates that sort of number. Uh, but route is a three card? I thought it was just one. I could be wrong. I'm not a warrior player. Ooh. Yeah, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's a two, three. I feel like Hank should just let it go. <laughs> I think he should, yeah. Drought does cost two, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, it's it cost Well, he's just gonna be he's just gonna be taking all the damage and then yeah. Steven's just gonna be using that floating resource to flip fuel the grains, which obviously fuels his next turn again. Five card hand with two resources floating on his next turn, so I mean, yeah, he's he could have rattle bones in his hand. He could have the um, become the art knight. Ben could get the other. Um, could get the other dude out the knife blade. But I suppose knife blades eight eight cost. I think yeah. I but think... he's got eight eight rune chance though. So yeah, I think he can threaten lethal this turn. But yeah, it's just going to be. I reckon Stephen can still. You know, even if he does block quite a lot, I think Steven can still poke back with the swords. Um, but this is a big attack yeah. coming in here. Oh. oh, Amplify. Blue Amplify. Probably not, probably not the, the attack he wanted to see, but... Yeah, so eight rune chance. He's probably made the right decision. Yeah, so it's a bit of a shame. Eight rune chance would bring Steven down to four. Um, then it's four then, damage the blue one. Yeah, so it's four coming. So he can still block with uh, maybe some some pieces of armor there for two. Go down to two and then mm -hmm. swing back with a f with a full cut with a five card hand and two vigors, which could just end Hank to be honest. So I think yeah. I think that's probably what's going to happen. I think he might just chuck the equipment in front of it. Yeah, so he's taking the rune chance to the face. 
to go down to four. <laughs> and then, he's, yeah, here we go. So he's going to block with his, block with his equipment and then just maybe swing back with five cards. Yeah, block him with Brave Forge. Yeah. I'm going down to one. Yeah. Going down to one life. Yeah, because they've both been blocked with, haven't they? Yeah, so if Stephen... He must be very confident going into his turn. Yeah, because if he blocks with just a Brave Forge against that blue Amplify, that's three damage. So he's going to go down to one if if that's the only thing he blocks with. But, okay, no. So he is blocking four with the Warrior's Valor. Um, but yeah, still fully blocked with a four-card hand and two Vigors popping on his turn. I think he can <laughs> potentially leak some Warrior reaction damage over the top of Hank Hank's defences here. But obviously we've seen... Hank have a few reactions, um, so maybe there is still something that he can use to stop himself here. But four, four all now towards the end. This is pretty close. Mm. If Hank can get through to next turn, he gets two. He does. That's right. Nice. Um, Stephen pitching into the copper here to draw a card and obviously turn on his swords attacks for free this turn. Oh, there you go. Swords are free now. That's it. I think. Even if he throws like the hot streak first, he's got to block it. So there's more high high likelihood it'll get. Oof. This is make or break time now. There's a lot of thinking going on. Um. Stephen just checking his graveyard to see if he can activate Kasai again, but I think there's only one yellow <clears> in there. I think there's only one yellow in there that he can use, so I'm not sure if he can do that. But yeah, he's a... Uh... Yeah, you go hot streak. Even though it's only two, he's, he's, if he lets, if he just says, oh, it'll just throw some kind of cool pump that'll just finish Hank off. He's got to block it. If he's only got attack actions left, it's going to get go again. He's swinging this entire cell. But, mm, and then it's not counting any pumps as well. Yeah, that's the thing. Hot Streak puts you in a bit of a corner at the end of the game where you know you have to block because your life total is low. But you can you know, to effectively block, you normally have to block with attacks because they block for three and that gives it go again. So yeah. This this weapon at this point in the game is yeah it's not very nice to be on the other end of which is why it was one of my favorite yeah. cards one of my favorite cards of the set it's nice to see Steven using it in this league yeah it's a uh, three three cards in hand good place to be yeah. And Hank's got no block on his armor apart from the tunic, so that could be something as well that's thrown under the bus this turn, just for that extra one. Um, as you can see, he's putting cards on the table now to sig <laughs> signify that that mm. could be the block that he chooses, but not committing into it just yet. So... A lot of thinking. My final on. spring tunic sleeves are still in their box, sealed. Never opened them. Oh, really? Yeah. I keep telling myself I'm going to sell them. And I can, well, no, because I won them from top eight in a pro quest. So I don't want to get rid of them. Too right. All right, okay. So he's given the hot streak go again, regardless of the run through. And um, floating two resources here. So we are going to see a Sintari Saber. Yeah. Um. Still have some interesting blocks there. Okay, she's so choosing to use blood, oh, blood on blood her hands. hands. Is that a slogism? It is, yeah, Slogism and Rattlebones. Um, oh. Now, I think Stephen has opted for Go Again on this sword, 
because oh, okay, this could this could be it. This could be. He, He's got two floating resources over there. He's given the Centauri Saber go again. What could follow that, do you think, for two resources? Could have the route. That could be what's in Arsenal. But if he's given the Centauri Saber go again, that you know that there's another thing coming after uh, this with two resources. Be the ho it's got nourishing emptiness. That could be uh, very nice if it's back in his hand. Exactly. Yeah, nourishing emptiness is a staple. Uh, it's a staple card in Kasai. We know he's got it because he pitched it earlier. Yeah, so it could be it could be the nourishing emptiness, and that that has dominate. So that could be one of the things mm -hmm. that finishes this game off. And obviously, Kasai does run a lot of nourishings because she can banish them from her own graveyard to make sure that all the nourishings are turned on. Um, oh, that's just not fair. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So it's a pretty cool synergy with Nourishing and Kasai. Um, but Hank is, yeah, backs into a corner. This is lethal, having to block with a Slogism and Tunic, which is, I believe, is for three. So he's still going to yeah. take... Oh, he's dead. He's just dead. One. Yeah, he's dead because Nourishing Emptiness. Oh. Yeah. Uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I think I flashed up dead on the screen a little bit too early there. But... <laughs> But um, yeah, there was always something big. There was always something big coming after that, and the virtual vist, uh, vist pump there from two wonderful sportsmen. Good game. But yeah, that's that was pretty sick. Obviously, we saw um, we saw a, a massive commanding life lead from uh, from Diego Madre. He was on forty to like Hank's twenty nine for the longest time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a couple of massive swing backs from Hank. That was like what, what thirty plus damage turn on when he came back with that ninth blade, and the um, it's huge, <laughs> and the bloody it was what was it? It was come to fight, and then two runic reckonings, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was plus nine. Plus so nine. eighteen. Plus the rune chance. Plus fifteen just, rune chance. Just nuts. <laughs> yeah. Just absolute nuts. The ninth blade is really good. I think. I feel like at the end, Hank didn't see the cards he needed. Like, like, because Amplify the Art Knight was, n you just know that was not the attack he needed. He needed either an Art Knight Ascendancy or he needed Knife Blade there to, because I think that would have possibly cinched the deal for him. Mm. Yeah, because he could, because oh, yeah, he, good game. He, yeah, because he was, he was able, because he had eight rune chance out. So he could have played whatever, whatever attack he wanted that was reduced by eight rune chance. So yeah, any attack. Uh, yeah, yeah. Exa exactly what you said there. He needed anything but a blue free attack. <laughs> he, needed yeah. the he needed the red ones, right? He, he wanted the other ones. Um, Even a red amplify would have been better because at least that's six damage. But uh, it, yeah, yeah, you know. So I know it was only two extra, but two extra. Yeah, he needed the amplify to to get for the even just for the dominate, um, and he needed the knife blade. Just for the big, humongous amount of attack that it throws on the back end. But I noticed he played Runic in the last game, Runic Reckoning, and I, I really beat over it in my um, Vincent deck with someone about packing it because it was a, it was like oh, putrid strings or Runic Reckoning. I was like, well, gotta be Runic Reckoning, surely. And they're like, no. big argument about it. Anyway, I ended up playing Runic Reckoning, and uh, yeah, I really like the card. I'm very big. So yeah, seeing Hank like being like, yeah, just just casually slap two on the table, plus come to fight. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's good cards. Obviously, it's just, it's just one of those cards that can just conditionally cost you no resources to play because mm. you got rune chance out. Um, yeah, so yeah, the barrier I think was probably was probably the biggest mistake in that game. It, even though obviously it saved him because obviously he took the hit and and blew some of them up um, it felt like if he just built he could have blocked and maybe had rune chance and, or just taken the hit and not lost them yeah, um, yeah I don't know I think that was one of the comments as well during the game is that um, is that you know a Viserai doesn't have you know room you almost have to run it because you need more sort of big things that can give you rune chance all in yeah. one burst and that was one of the mm. only options but well yeah, played. four in one go is great. Yeah, well played to both players. Uh, congratulations mm. to Diomamada who got there in the end. Uh, so that now puts yeah. Diomamada on uh, two one, 
now going into nice. going into round four uh, and that puts Hank on one two going into round four um, so uh, so yeah it's better than both better than my record that's for sure um, <laughs> in the league that means nothing um, but before we go please please plug what you need to plug and uh, yeah we'll call it a night for uh, for this game awesome um, well again thank you so much for having me on really appreciate it uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun mm-hmm. quite enjoyed it um, catch us on uh, Instagram at uh, Void Games Crew Big Boss Book Club um, uh, on X at Big Boss 010 and Facebook um, uh Boy Games Crew and uh, Big Boss Book Club. Um, yeah, there's pretty much winding down on the podcast at the moment, but I'm hoping I can. There's still a few more episodes in the bank that I need to uh, uh, get finished and, and get out there. So uh, we'll get them. We'll get them done at some point. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, yeah, we'll see you still all over again for more league that means absolutely nothing. Very soon. Cheers. <laughs>